Hi friends. If you click to check out what my December favorites are for 2020, but now is 2021, <laughs> then please keep on watching. Hi, I'm Alicia. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well, thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things, all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeup, so you can head over to my Instagram. Happy New Year, fam. This is the first video kicking off 2021. I, of course, had to do a full year of favorites. And with that said, had to roll in with the December number fave. We have skincare, makeup, tools, and nail polish. Although I have those products on, I do have some B-roll to show the demos while applying this product so you can see them in action. I also might have a dedicated video to a few of these items. So if you want to see more extensive demos, more details about these products, you can head over to that playlist. I will make sure I compile it after I edit this video. With that said, let's start with skincare. And I actually ordered this Try to find my email, but I, I failed to locate it. I'm so sorry. I might have ordered Dr. Sam's line back in November. I ordered her cleanser, her flawless moisturizer, both the standard and the light, her brightly and nightly serums. I did not buy her sunscreen because I saw it predominantly relies on zinc oxide and that just wasn't a diverse enough ingredient deck for me in regards to the filters used for that formula. I'm sure it's great and you know what, down the road, I might eventually buy it. But I wanted to showcase this serum and that is her Flawless Brightly Serum. This is designed to apply during the day and the star ingredients are azelaic acid, excuse me, azelaic acid. I believe the vitamin C derivative she uses here is the ascorbyl glucoside. Ascorbyl glucoside. There we go. Dr. Sam loves azelaic acid. She has a whole video on the ingredient. It is great for tackling inflammation as well as being antibacterial, but not in a way that benzoyl peroxide is. That is going to encourage the growth of other mutant bacteria. You know what I'm saying? This is very gentle, but very effective. And I found this especially to be so in preventing maskne. I was having a hard time with a lot of breakouts around the jawline, around my mouth area. And although they weren't severely bad, I just could not resist the urge to, you know, poke and prod. This serum helped keep the breakouts at bay, not only that, but to help really lighten the hyperpigmentation or the post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation I underwent from all that picking for the last like nine months. I would say definitely apply moisturizer after you apply the serum because it does dry down like matte and if you leave it alone as is i think it'll be a little too drying for you so make sure when you apply this oh no hold on wait a minute alicia don't give unsolicited medical advice <laughs> it does dry down soft matte just moisturize afterwards that's that's all i'm gonna say okay i've enjoyed it i haven't underwent any severe cases of irritation and i'll continue to use it when it's done and i'll probably repurchase so i highly recommend this daily serum as it offers a plethora of benefits in terms of again the azelaic acid targeting inflammation and breakouts and then you have the vitamin c derivative to also help with evening out skin tone niacinamide is fourth on the ingredient list so if you're especially sensitive to that that ingredient maybe stay away from this one and choose another formula that doesn't have niacinamide but maybe a vitamin c derivative or azelaic acid with that said i rather enjoyed it it very well could have been a November favorite, but I just forgot to put it in that list. I'm so sorry. I want to stick to the same category, but we're switching gears here. I don't like the word fail, okay? I like to think of faves and fails as you know, good side and bad side. I don't think you have a bad side. I think you have a rehearsal side and then you have your showtime side. The showtime side always hits no matter what. When they get the rehearsal side, you know, they might be in rehearsal indefinitely. We will never know. The rehearsal product for this month is the Ankyless Oat Cleansing Balm. I wanted to give this a chance because when I saw how it sold out on Sephora and what I thought never restocked, Ever. It intrigued me. I'm like, what is the big deal? Why does everyone want this cleanser? Okay, I know Inky List is very popular. It's like another ordinary moment, right? All these highly effective products at a very low cost. Packaging is modest, but it still has impact, you know, the black and the white. Never was able to order it from Sephora. 
but I happened to encounter it in one of my Sephora's. I was like, what? Because again, I just never saw it online or in store for quite some time. When I saw this in person, I was like, all right, well, let me give it a shot. It says it helps remove makeup and cleanse sensitive skin. I think the key word here to focus on is helps. I think it helps remove makeup, but as I mentioned in my empties video, I left the whole double cleanse regimen. I solely rely on one cleanser, and I do feel this is a cleanser you have to follow with another cleanser, one that has a little more sud, one that's going to take away the residue that's left behind. Now, if you have particularly dry skin, like I'm talking like dry skin, you might appreciate the cleanser film that's left behind on your skin. And you know what? I gave it a shot. I thought maybe I'm overreacting. I'm just used to the certain type of feel my skin is in after I cleanse with my favorite cleansers like the Dr. Sam Flawless Cleanser or the Good Molecules Rose Water Daily Cleanser. I think this leaves behind a little too much zhuzh for my liking, especially since I like to layer my essences and at the most two, I'm only using at the moment the Neogen Rice Ferment Micro Essence and the Good Molecules niacinamide toner. I feel it's a little too much residue. Now for the days that it was rather cold and my skin was very dry, I do like this as a morning cleanser. I do think as a little more moisture to my skin, it feels more emollient, but this is something I can't use every day. I feel if I do, it's a little too much and I'd rather just use my other two cleansers to take my makeup off. Could I just get over it and use this as a first cleanser and follow with my other cleansers? Absolutely. That's just a me thing is what I decide to do. I do appreciate this, but it's not my favorite. I don't understand perhaps the hype that surrounds it. Uh, I don't know if the reviews have changed drastically since the last time I checked them. Let me know if you have the oat cleansing balm and let me know any suggestions you might have for me in order to get the most out of this cleanser. We're back to showtime, but still in skincare. The Dear Claire's Midnight Blue Calming cream. This does come in a jar component. I opted for the tube. This comes in two fluid ounces, the biggest size that they have available to buy. It looks blue. It looks blue. It does not have any fragrance. It's rather rich, but I really love this product. The directions say to apply this on certain portions of your face that might be drier than others. I'm assuming maybe around the mouth or even on the forehead, depending on your skin condition and type. I put this all over my face, fam. For the days that were really cold and my skin was feeling it, it was feeling dry, I would replace my typical nighttime moisturizer with the calming blue cream and I think it does have a huge positive effect on inflammation, on dryness, on sensitivity, on reactive skin. I think it is very calming as the label, as the title suggests and it just feels really nice to apply. It has like that beautiful silky texture and the way it absorbs into the skin and what's left behind is nothing greasy or overly shiny. It just feels velvety plush and protected. I have like a really nice moisture shield on my face and that's exactly how I experience this midnight blue calming cream. I'm halfway through it. I've used quite a bit of it and I might actually repurchase this. This has Centella Asiatica extract. It's after sun care, calm and soothe. So it's in that calm and soothe category of things, but I really love how this found its way into my winter skincare routine and it is very much welcomed. Enjoy this product immensely and I highly recommend it. Moving into the makeup. Now I am so surprised at myself why did I get this? I saw the, hold on, the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Skin Finish Buildable Coverage Foundation Stick. I saw this while I think the last uh, VIB Rouge sale was going on. How many positive reviews it had. All five stars were full. All of them. And there were a number of reviews that were there. So I was like, really? All of Huda's previous complexion products for me 
were a miss because they were so heavily, heavily fragranced. I mean, this stuff had perfume in it. I could not use her concealer successfully. I couldn't use the full filter liquid foundation version of this. I mean, forget it. Even if the texture was nice, I, I couldn't deal with the scent. So I just bypassed any complexion product Huda Beauty released. But when I saw the ingredient list on the foundation stick and discovered that it did not have any fragrance, I was quite surprised. I think I bought this early on in November. It might have been, I think I purchased this late November, early December. It was one of those weeks. I went to Sephora, we were practicing social distancing, we were making sure all the whatevers were in check. I got shade matched, I have the color Butter Pecan 330N. I could have gone one shade maybe up if I wanted to really, really match my skin tone, which unfortunately now is like a light medium. You know, I haven't been tanning that much, okay? This might be a strong medium, medium tan. And I really like the neutral undertone, but what surprised me about this foundation was how lightweight it feels, but how beautiful the coverage is. It has a velvety soft texture. I would say it is soft matte. I did not set on the bigger portions of my face. I did set under my eyes with my other concealer, but this foundation stick is extraordinary. I like how it lasts throughout the day, maybe around the seven, eight hour mark, the center of my brow starts to break apart a little bit. That's typical in terms of my skin condition with the oils breaking through, but it just leaves behind a really soft texture on the skin while feeling lightweight. And again, the coverage is amazing. I love how it blends with what I use here. Another favorite, the Sonergy, the mini base, baby. Although the skin match not super dead on, I do appreciate the little bit of warmth it provides without me looking overly yellow or orange. I think this is a really beautiful neutral undertone with a little bit of golden in there that's very balancing to my complexion and it welcomes any other shade I decide to combine with it. For instance, today I applied my Shiseido Gel Stick in 302. Everything kind of melted together and I was really happy with the result and I've been using this with my, of course, Masuku Okay, I've been combining it with the Suku. I combine it with my different concealers, but all in all, I just love the portability of this. Although plastic, it doesn't feel super luxurious as it's not made out of glass or a super heavy plastic. You have the gradient clear cap and the Huda Beauty label here on the front with the matte black finish on the design. Appreciate that because it's easy to travel with. You know, if I'm going to Bay's house or if I have a shoot or what have you, I could rely on this foundation to do the trick. And again, the finish is amazing. I don't necessarily have to powder it down. I applied bronzer on top of the foundation without setting it first. So again, really happy with it. If you are a fan of stick foundations, you know, the one that I would immediately compare this to and one that I had used extensively before is the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. That one is a little more satin and finish. So maybe that is more appropriate for you if you live on the drier part of the skin type spectrum, if you are normal to oily, I think you would enjoy the Huda Beauty Fall Filter Foundation Stick. It's a little more soft matte and finish, but it doesn't look dry on the skin. It has a little bit of luminosity to it, dare I say, when you blend it all in. This is a beautiful formula. I don't know where we are with Huda. I know she has stepped down. There are some things going on with her, but I see people still buy her stuff. So I really, I really don't know what's going on with that fam. <laughs> I'm sure you'll let me know down below. <laughs> I wanted to carve out some time during my monthly favors going forward to feature a product that is always a favorite, but I have been using in a long time. An old favorite, if you will, and that is the Marc Jacobs Omega Bronze. Now I know when on and on and on about the fragrance and who does product, this does have a coconut scent, but it is not as aggressive as that physician formula, but a bronzer scent. Like, oh my gosh, that, I could not wear that stuff. It is terrible. But this coconut scent, I could get down with. I could get down with. So I applied it today in the shade Tantalize. This currently is available in three shades. 
although I don't know if the first shade is still available or the second shade that released that everyone lost their minds over because it was more neutral in tone, more brown, you know? This has a little more warmth to it and I just love the undertone of this bronzer and the fact that I can get away with it as applied solo and don't feel the need to apply a blush on top. I could bring it in a little closer to the apples of my cheeks and maybe apply it slightly heavier here on the temple area of my face, but this is a phenomenal formula. It is so smooth and velvety, but I especially love the tone of this shade in particular. I don't know if Marc Jacobs Beauty will come out with another shade. I hopefully it'll be a deeper one because again, this is a phenomenal bronzer. The tone, like I mentioned, is absolutely gorgeous. It just adds that perfect amount of warmth without looking overly too orange or too yellow. So had to present an old fave for this month and we'll see what old fave will present for the January favorites. This is a favorite to me, but might not be for someone else. The Viseart Petite 4 in Kaline. I really like this particular one because my girl Vicky J was so nice to say that she loved Praline on me the best. But what really sprouted my fave levels, if you will, was the fact that I needed shadows that were just enough for a photo shoot I did with Daphne, one of my favorite photographers. Sometimes doing a heavy eye when you're doing athletic stuff just doesn't align well. But the softness and just elegance that Viseart presents with their shadow formulas and shades, I thought this was a perfect role for it to take. This quad in particular, I think the browns are just beautifully soft and the tone of like this bronze copper is just gorgeous. And I think it's neutral enough that I could wear it on its own. I have something else on here that's coming up in a minute, but it doesn't take over the entire face. Like, you know how I love my Pat McGrath, you know what I'm saying? But anytime I use one of Pat's shadows, I feel like I am delivering a statement eye that depending on the day, and I did use Pat McGrath for my fall shoot, but I wanted something a little more bold on purpose. For this shoot, I wanted something softer, and that's why I relied on Viseart for that task. And I just really love, particularly the shades in this quad, but really for the highlight shade, this beige golden champagne shade, oh my gosh, on the cheekbones, fabulous. It lessens the room in my makeup bag, okay? I don't need to bring a separate highlighter. I could just pop on this shadow on my cheekbones and be done, okay? The complexion is glowing. This bronzy copper shade I apply all over the lid and I take the brown matte through the crease. I take this more satiny softer shade on the inner corner of the eye. You can combine these shades in however way you want, but no matter what, I just think the tones of these browns are beautiful just so perfectly done and i know these are not the most boldest they're not the most in your face but in terms of what i needed this month for my photo shoot and what i could use it for in the future for these softer eye looks i love it it's definitely a fave same category but we're moving into rehearsal product the reason why i'm saying this is a rehearsal product and not a showtime product is because I do feel the Danessa Myricks Twin Flames needs a little bit of work. Let me just explain. I thought these will be a little more shiny than expected. And I soon realized after my initial video that Danessa loves to layer, she loves to experiment, and these look particularly shiny if you apply a gloss on top. Now the problem with the gloss is I feel that's more editorial appropriate. You apply the gloss, you take the photo, you don't have to worry about it creasing because you ain't gonna wear that out and about and try to make an impression, okay? By the time you wanna do so, your eyelid is gonna be greasy. You need to experiment a lot with these in order to find the right method that's gonna work for you. You have to be willing to experiment. And if you're not willing to experiment, if you're not willing to combine this with different eyeshadows and what have you and figure out the best method, you might not wanna get these and you might 
be disappointed. I also found that these are best applied perhaps on top of another shadow. I apply these on their own, just painted it on, and you can see how it cracked on the skin. So I think these are best used when you apply them on top of another shadow so that shadow can act as a foundation for the color. So if this starts to, you know, crease or what have you, you still have that shadow underneath to show through and to still hold the color up. Now, does that mean these are bad? Absolutely not. Maybe I was just expecting something, you know, like I love the Natasha Denona Chromiums. I was expecting something along those lines and these, these are a little more tricky to work with. So that's why I dubbed these more of a rehearsal product for me than a Showtime product. I still have to use them more and more and more, but again, they need a little bit of zhuzhin. You know what I'm saying? But just based on talking with you all that sometimes you just want a product to like give it up and you just walk away from it. And I think this is not a walk away type of product, okay? You you got you have to do a little trimming, a little evaluation, a little experimenting, a little trial and error. What I do consider a Showtime product, however, from Danessa and what I have on my eyes is her Color Fix Foils. Now, surprisingly, I think the tube is a little less user-friendly than the doe foot applicator, but I do find that the Color Fix Foil product is I feel I enjoy it better than the Twin Flames because you definitely get more shine from these. Like this, I think actually has like the glitter particles in here that just make it incredibly shiny. Whereas the Twin Flames, you have like that initial shine and brightness. Yeah, but you have to work with it a little more. So this you get a little more razzle dazzle this you get like the multi-chrome for sure but again you just have to be careful with how you work with it and the minute you blend it out it dulls a little bit but when you blend the color fix foils out they do not fade they shine they twinkle they feel lightweight on the eyes and they dry quickly when they dry down and set that's a wrap so you have to work fairly quickly with the color fix foils but man it is absolutely gorgeous and because of that i prefer this over the twin flames because i do love that razzle dazzle but the Twin Flames, you know, I'm looking at it now, it's, it's gorgeous as well, but you gotta find a bit more groove with it in the application process. Brushes, what can I say? The Sonya G Kiyaki Travel Set is by far just, it stunned me, stunned me. But the star brush out of the whole set has to be the mini base. This is a mixture of synthetic and natural hairs. I do hope Sonya decides to release a bigger version of this brush because it is immaculate, immaculate when blending out my foundation. It is incredibly soft. I mean, the texture of this brush, she got this bundle combination to a T. There is no stabbing, there's no roughness. You can blend it in with downstrokes, you can press your foundation in, you can swirl it in, no matter how you do it and no matter the medium you work with this brush, the foundation finish is going to be absolutely beautiful. So I do hope she releases a bigger brush with this same uh, synthetic and natural hair blend because it is exquisite. Absolutely. I've been using these brushes to travel to Bay's house with and they are absolutely perfect to do my whole face with. Now I could rely solely on the three brushes that come in the set. You have the undyed goat hair versions of the Jumbo Blender, the Mini Booster, and the Flat Definer. So these brushes will definitely give you a whole eye look, but because I have some room in my, my eyeshadow brush slides, I put some of my refer brushes in there. But if you really had to like, cut it down this brush set will cover it for me without a doubt but the mini base i don't know if she'll replace her base one with this blend because i much prefer this over her base one the base one could be a little stabby labby if we can modify that that would be great if we can have a brush head size with this blend forget it i will buy two 
I'll buy three. And of course, I had to share the Nakamura Seisakusho brushes. Fude Beauty was so nice to send me these, and I do have a video showcasing them. And of course, a huge thank you to Sonia G and Beautylish for sending me her Kiyaki brush set. Thank you, friends, so much. The Nakamura Seisakusho brushes. They hit. This is a natural hair and synthetic blend. This is one of their powder brushes and they are extremely soft and just beautiful in feel, but they're not super, super, super expensive. You know, some of the Kazan brushes I like I presented, some some of these Fox or Golden Fox Kolinsky brushes. I mean, it gets crazy. All right, and I want them all, but I'm not because you know, you know better, Alicia. Sometimes natural hair and synthetic blends can be a little funny, like depending on, it could be really soft, it could be really rough, or a little bit of both. This just hits the mark. And I use the brush from the Now series, the, the pink handle, applying my bronzer with it. And it's just extraordinary, this brush, the way it's shaped, how soft it is. And I like that it's a little stiff. It has a little more pushback, which just allows a little bit more control it moves the product around if you like a really nice blend I use the eyeshadow brush number six from the K series to not only apply my under eye loose powder but I use it to apply the champagne color shadow from the Viseart quad palette it is such a versatile brush this is I believe pine squirrel and a synthetic blend oh my goodness I go into much more detail on the actual Nakamura video if you want to check it out I'll make sure it's in the playlist down below these in particular I think not only are the blends phenomenal but the actual design for the brush heads and the bristle length superb and lastly although I don't have the nail polish on my nails right now and I failed to take a close-up video of them <gasps> these are the nail polish shades I had on in my best of video it is the Starly <laughs> and Kelly Marissa collab. This is their second time at collabing and I had on Tara and Infrared. Let me tell you, these polishes on the first application, you're getting like full coverage. It's insane. I don't know if you can tell, but just the depth of this green and you have the little hollow flakes in there as well and i really love kelly marissa i appreciate her swatches and i look to her swatches also and her opinion on a lot of these nail polish releases i was very pleased to see that she collaborated again with starly oh and starly had their planetarium or their their planet collection which i missed out on the box set <gasps> i might grab it again this month if it becomes available but overall, I slept on Starly. I forgot about them. I knew about them, but I forgot about them. I was just distracted by the ILNP and the Live Love Polish, you know, the Fun Lack or the Hollow Taco. But I forgot about Starly and I missed out on that release, but I really wanted to pick up Kelly Marissa's collaboration. This, I can't. Like, infrared looks like ruby slippers in a bottle. The polish is bold. There's no streaking. It's just polish like I put it on my nails I was like oh my god I had to take some off the brush because it was just like beginning to pull because it just has so much body to it amazing I have ILNP on and I just missed the opportunity to put a starly polish on when talking about my favorites but that's what happens when I don't make my list in the morning that's what happened, Alicia. Those are my favorites and my rehearsal products. <laughs> I wanted to keep it a little shorter and briefer as I'm trying to do shorter videos for the new year. I'll have my longer videos for the ride or dies, but I understand that some people are not about that. They just love, you know, that 10 minute video life. And I'm trying and I'm learning and I will do my absolute best, especially when I am reviewing single products to just wrap it up but want to give you as much information and observation as I can and with that said I hope all of you have been having a fabulous new year so far can't wait to create more and hear from you friends and with that said that is all right thank you all so much for watching I hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel and until then I'll see you on here again with another review tutorial monthly favorites, daily vlog, or nightly life chit chat. Take care and I will see you again soon. If you click... Okay. <laughs>